Hello again. You know, uh, in Meta Center, we have a motto, an expression of our mission, which is helping people practice nonviolence more safely and more effectively. But uh, there is a point at which a uh, situation in which people practice it so safely that it isn't effective anymore. And uh, that is when they stick to symbolism, when they should be advancing to more concrete methods. As I was studying nonviolence over the years, I, I began to develop a kind of hunch, kind of intuition that we were overusing symbolism and there was something wrong with that. And what bothered me was that if you have to fall back on symbols, it implies that nonviolence doesn't have any strength, doesn't have any power. So you make a symbolic appeal to your adversary because there's nothing else that you can do. And I looked again closely at many of Gandhi's most uh, effective episodes and I saw that symbolism, mere symbolism without any connection with concrete realities was not ever used. And I ran this past none other than his grandson, Arun Gandhi. And uh, Arun said to me, you're absolutely right. Uh, my grandfather never relied on symbols. So people think, well, what about those marches? Yeah, he did go on marches. You saw one in the film Gandhi, uh, Attenborough's classic epic film. But those marches were necessary because thousands of workers had walked off their jobs in the mines and had nowhere to go. He needed to get them to his uh, ashram, to Tolstoy Farm in the Transvaal. Not only that, but in order to do that, they had to cross an illegal border. So it was an act of civil disobedience and a concrete relocation of people to the headquarters, uh, the GHQ of uh, Satyagraha. So it was not symbolic. Now, when you think about it, if you just use symbols, you are in phase one. If you remember our escalation curve uh, on page 108 of Search for a Nonviolent Future, you are presupposing that the adversary cares enough about your feelings that he or they or she are, are interested and will be moved by what you are saying, whether you say it with words or say it with symbols. But when you come to that point, as we did in 2003, when the president said uh, in response to the largest popular demonstration the world had ever seen, something like 12 million people who mustered out around the world to uh, plea that Iraq not be attacked. He said, I don't have to listen to these people. They're just a, a focus group. So he was signaling that we are now in phase two, but we were still using symbolic uh, and other protests. So this is not to say that symbols aren't effective. Uh, when you put a flower in the rifle barrel of a National Guardsman, it is effective. When you plant corn on top of a missile silo, as Kathy Kelly and others did, it is effective, but you need most of the time to be able to back it up with something concrete. And this is what led me to discover the uh, great importance of constructive program. Now, uh, in this part of the book, I also hinted at a study that I'd like to tell you a little bit more about. It was done by a couple. A book is called In Common Predicament by Sharif and Sharif. And uh, what they did was, this was at a, a, a summer camp in Canada. The uh, campers were divided into, I don't know, the eagles and the rabbits or something. And of course, immediately, just because of that artificial division that shows you what symbols can do on the wrong side, they immediately started quarreling and uh, the tension was really getting very serious. So the counselors then tried to use different methods for bringing them back together. They thought, oh, if they see a movie together or if they eat at the same table, all kinds of entertaining things like that, uh, that would reconcile the difficulties. It didn't work. But what did work was the truck broke down and they needed the truck to get into town to get, I don't know, pizza or another movie or something. 
And both groups of campers had to kind of get together to figure out what was wrong with the truck. And then they immediately overcame a lot of the tension and a lot of the quarreling. So it shows you uh, two things, I guess, that working together is a powerful way of reconciliation. And that should always be a part of, say, truth and reconciliation work as it goes on around the world. And it also shows you that things that are concrete are inherently more powerful, and I'm going to argue inherently more at home in true nonviolence than things that are merely symbolic. So let's mull that over, and I think now we're coming close to the end of uh, chapter four. I just want to make one more point with you, which I'll do next time, and we can go on.